Well, hello there, Thrivers. Welcome to Thrive This Morning as we dig into God's Word. Um, I will say today is one that um, we're going to be looking at something today that, that that breaks my heart, and I see it more and more um, in my life, and it it tears me up inside. It, it leads me to long prayers of of um, for people just in tears. Um, it's such an important thing I really want to share with you guys today. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, uh, let's pray. Father, I pray today, Lord, that this might be an encouragement to people, a challenge to people. Lord, as we um, we dig into your word today and look at divorce. And Lord, I pray for all those out there that are that are going through divorce right now. Lord, I pray for reconciliation in their relationships. Father, I pray that you might make those things whole. whole. Father, I pray that you give peace and joy to those who are trying to do what you'd have them to do uh, during these times, Lord. And ultimately, Lord, I just pray that you have your way in their lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we've been discussing, Jesus is talking about things that were in the law, saying you've heard this and showing how that's fulfilled and what that really should look like. Um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 31, Jesus says, It was also said, Whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. So he really comes out and he's saying, hey, yeah, you've heard back in Deuteronomy that it was okay to, you know, um, give a letter of divorce. We talked about that in our... One of our first couple of things when we looked at um, um, Joseph, right? And Joseph and Mary. Um, when Joseph believed Mary had committed adultery. I mean, she was found to have to be with a child. And uh, it was just right her certificate. You know, about writing her certificate quietly, a certificate of divorce, and, and letting her go. And um, it was easy then to get a divorce. It's easy today to get a divorce. But divorce isn't easy. It's funny. You know, you just get, you, all it takes is someone to say, I'm not, not doing this anymore, and a divorce can happen. Now, relationships are hard. Let me just, I'm going to preface that. I understand relationships are hard. Marriage is difficult. All right. I've been, my wife and I have been married a little while now. Um, I think we've been married about 21 years. And it hasn't always been roses and, you know, whatever. It's, it's been rough a few times. Um, it's gotten very difficult. And we've had to learn to love better, you know. We've had to learn to understand and communicate better. Um, you know, I'm sure there are times where we could have just given up on it and, and thought, man, it'd just be easier to get divorced. You know, maybe the love's, you know, the love isn't there. That I don't feel the way I used to feel. Yeah, well, you don't. You feel different, but you know, you still love the person, or you do love the person. That's a physical action. But it says here, you know. I say to you, everyone who divorces his wife, except from the grounds of sexual immorality, he does give the out. If your partner, your spouse, commits adultery, you know, he's not going to hold that against you in getting a divorce. Does that mean you should get a divorce? No, I don't think so. Again, we have, we have the God of reconciliation, right? We have the God who takes, you know, um, sinners against the perfect God and brings them and makes them whole. Uh, that's our God. That's our Jesus. And I have seen, praise God, I've seen relationships where um, a partner has committed adultery, um, you know, things have gone bad, and yet they repent of their sins, right? They, they, they repent to God, they repent to their wives, they repent to those who were who, who are involved in other ways, you know, or those who, you know, who are affected by it. And they ask for forgiveness, forgiveness is given, um, the relationship is, is made whole, um, sure, they spend years going through problems. It's not easy to, to do this and to go through that. But God is the one who brings and makes things whole. And then that would be the ultimate prayer for any situation like that. But um, but he gives the out for sexual immorality. But if there's no sexual morality and, and adultery is committed, you know, and I don't think it's right to go find another wife or to go have someone else take this wife. Uh, they're... Just because they're not legally married anymore doesn't mean they're not married married. As a matter of fact, Matthew, um, oh, Matthew chapter, I gotta remember now, <laughs> 19. Um, yeah, verse, starting verse 3. 
It says, The Pharisees came up to him, me and Jesus, and tested him by asking, Is it lawful to, to divorce one's wife for any cause? And he answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, hold fast to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. I mean, that is a pretty clear picture, right? That's what marriage is. is, is you're no longer two separate people, you're one person. Don't let that be separated, he's saying. And, and, and you know, so I look at it as, man, they may have separated themselves, but they're still one flesh. This is not, this is how I look at it, all right, guys? And I want to see that one flesh come back together and be reconciled more than anything else. And I would say if you're trying, if you're a believer in God and, and you want to do what God wants and you're going through a divorce, you have these problems going on and your wife wants a divorce, your husband wants a divorce, and, and you know it's not right, you know it's not what God wants, and you're repenting to God for your sins, you're forgiving, or you're repenting to your spouse whatever sins you may have, you're forgiving them and their sins, and you're trying to help you get this thing reconciled. You know what, guys? I would say you keep fighting for that. You keep fighting for that over and over and over and over again. Um, that's what I would recommend. Jesus goes on to say, um, The disciples said to him, As such is the case of a man with his wife, for chapter 19 again, by the way, um, it is better not to marry at all. But Jesus said, Not everyone can receive this saying but only those whom it is given. And um, as far as, uh, you know, how this works, and, and he's saying, hey, it's not easy. Not everyone can understand this and do this. Um, you know, and it's, it's not something that's easy to do. And it's not. But it's what's important. It's what God wants. Um, I want to read another passage of 1 Corinthians. It's a little farther in my Bible. 1 Corinthians, I believe, chapter 7. And if it's not, I'm going to look like an idiot. Um, he says here, To the married, in verse 10, I give this charge. Not I. He said, Paul said, not me, but the Lord gives this charge. The wife should not separate from her husband. But if she does, she should remain unmarried, or else be reconciled to her husband. And the husband should not divorce his wife. And here's what he's saying, guys. You guys are believers. You're Christians. You guys are separate. You guys are getting divorced. He's saying, listen, first of all, if you guys are separate, don't go find don't go find, find new spouses. Either stay single or get reconciled. Don't sign the divorce. Don't don't give her don't give your wife a divorce because you guys are separating. Now, sometimes it comes out of your hand, guys, and that breaks my heart. And there's you know, that's a whole other story. But I would say marriages are worth fighting for. Right. You are no longer to your one flesh. Fight for your marriage. I'll tell you what, guys. And girls. This is something that is so important. I I, I see it. I, mean, I can tell you, I see it all the time. A friend of mine recently messaged me to tell me he was going through a divorce. And it just, it just, it tore me apart. Um, I know and love both of them. And it just, it, it hurts so deeply. I've seen so many people I love get divorced in the last few years. People have been married for years and years, you know, and, and man, it is awful. I just, it is so, it destroys not only your, your own relationship, but it destroys your family and your kids and, and everything else. It's just, ah, it's so hard. I'm so glad God made relationships and, and marriage. I love my wife. I love being married to her. I can't imagine separating from her. I couldn't imagine trying to live this life without her. And guys, if you don't understand that in your own marriages, you need to get, you need to get that resolved. You need to understand what it would really be like without them. And understand that you're one flesh. Fight for your marriages. Guys, fight, fight, fight for it. It's worth fighting for. You guys, people, guys, girls, you're going through divorce right now. I pray for you. Let, let me know. I'll add you to my prayer list. I have several people I'm praying for going through divorce right now. Um, I pray that reconciliation can happen. I hope it does uh, more than anything else in the world. 
ultimately, guys, if you're going through it, trust the Lord, follow Him, seek Him out, uh, do what He wants you to do, do everything you can to make peace with your spouse, to, to make things right with your spouse, to be reconciled to your spouse, but ultimately, trust God. Right? Get the peace that comes from Him that passes all understanding. Right? Peace and joy come from Him, not from our circumstances. Alright, hope that's beneficial. I hope it's encouraging or challenging. I don't know. Let's continue to pray for those who are divorced. Let's pray for our marriages. Let's fight for them. Alright? Thanks, guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow.